Some things you either get or you don't. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 British TV shows Americans will never understand. My contribution. Oh, thank you. Okay. That's, Why do you want to kiss? Hmm? Why do you want to kiss? That's all right. I'll just. Well, I'm giving the pound. Got to have a kiss. I don't have to have a kiss. It's all... Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at some of the most uniquely British shows on telly that US audiences just don't get. We've still got a long way to go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're getting there. Number 10, The Great British Sewing Bee. A nail-biting competition to discover Britain's best home sewer, the Great British Sewing Bee has it all. Polite, friendly competitors, haberdasheries, and of course, sewing. These mannequins are excited about being adorned with the trickiest garments yet. Fronted by Claudia Winkleman and later comedian Joe Lycett, it's an even more wholesome counterpart to the ever-popular Bake Off. Contestants go head-to-head -head in a series of tricky challenges to make the best clothes they can, putting their amateur talents to the test, with the winners often launching careers in fashion. If the one annual series of Sewing Bee isn't enough, there's usually a celebrity iteration run for children in need. It's great stuff, but without forced drama and a catwalk finale, it's something only Brits seem to appreciate. <laughs> Okay, that's it, finished! It's the best thing I've ever seen. Number 9, The Office. It kick-started Ricky Gervais's career and served as the basis for one of the few successful US adaptations of a British show. I'd say, uh, at one time or another, every bloke in the office has woken up at the crack of dawn. <laughs> what? But the very fact there needed to be a US adaptation of The Office proves how fundamentally British it is. After all, there's only one David Brent. Happy birthday. See you later. Responsible for popularising the mockumentary format, comedy owes a lot to The Office, which managed to take one of the dullest settings possible, a paper company office based in slow, and give us absolutely timeless TV. Even the 2016 film spin-off failed to recapture the magic of the original. <coughs> Number 8, Midsummer Murders. It's a miracle anybody is left in the county of Midsummer to actually get murdered. Why anybody would choose to live there has been a conundrum viewers have ignored for decades. I tell you what though, Tom, whoever did it must have been in a hell of a temper. Probably killed him with the first blow and then just went on bashing. Yes, George, I saw that. Adapted from Caroline Graham's Chief Inspector Barnaby Books, the show has been killing off characters since the 1990s, and there are very few British actors who haven't been murdered or been a murderer in Midsummer at one point or another. Let's hope she holds out. We don't have much time, Nelson. We've got it. The show focuses just as much on rural English life as it does on grisly killings, making it especially foreign to US audiences, who don't seem to appreciate a slice of village life the same way. All your innermost secrets, your entire life history, and he turned it into a best-selling book. What would you do? I'd kill him. Number 7, Bo Selector. In this sketch show, Lee Francis took a savage stab at popular culture, mocking celebrities on both sides of the pond. While he was famous for taking on Americans Michael Jackson, Britney Spears, and David Blaine, his British lampoons got even more specific. His Mel B impression, in which he put on an exaggerated northern accent and promised to reveal the Spice Girls' darkest secrets, was particularly notable, as was his antisocial and aggressive version of Elton John. When you get something over the net, you have to deal with the bloody postman! I HATE THE BLOODY POSTMAN! I WISH HE WAS DEAD! And his impersonation of Craig David gained so much notoriety that it actually affected David's career. Bo Selector was bad celebrity impressions at their best, but too surreal and puerile for some tastes. Hello, I do! Drop a bow! Can I get a rewind? 
Number 6. Blue Peter The longest-running children's TV show in the world remains tricky to categorize, but you won't find a person in the UK who doesn't have fond memories of Blue Peter from one point or another. <gasps> It's famously given rise to recognizable phrases like, here's one I made earlier, and, and now for something completely different, which have been parodied and repeated to death. Three, two, one! Go, go, go! Put your hand on your feet! The show provides children with entertainment, arts and craft lessons, practical life skills, and of course, the coveted Blue Peter badge. Those lucky enough to nab one get themselves free entry to thousands of attractions across the UK. We'd actually like to award wow. you with our highest accolade. It is the gold Blue Peter badge wow. for Thank your you. Royal Highnesses. Thank you very much. That's very touching. Thank you very, very Thank much. You. Number five, Taskmaster. While it was Alex Horn's idea, giving the reins to Greg Davies was a masterstroke. An array of five celebrities, usually comedians, are chosen as the lineup for every series, where they compete in bizarre tasks set forth by the Taskmaster. <laughs> Infamous challenges include having to make an exotic sandwich, having to buy the Taskmaster the best gift, throwing a tea bag into a mug from a distance, among countless others. <laughs> it's recently received an American adaptation, but only time will tell if it becomes as popular in the US as it has in the UK. I'm always seeing you do cool stuff. I try my best, but it's never. Good enough. Number 4. Detectorists In this comedy series, Toby Jones and Mackenzie Crook tackle the kings of all hobbies, metal detecting. Coils to the soil, have a great day's detecting! Hey! Hey! <laughs> Wandering around and collecting bits of detritus from British countryside, including ring pulls, sweet wrappers, and sometimes ancient pennies, this unassuming double act makes for surprisingly relatable comedy. Somewhat dissatisfied with their lives, the hobbyists turn to detecting, muddling through chilly fields and their day-to-day -day activities. While Lance struggles with his ex-wife, and he struggles with his current wife. It's hard, Andy. We want it. <laughs> Can't feel my legs. The show most resonates with middle-aged men who metal detect themselves. Suffice to say, Detectorists has a very niche audience. Guys, guys, can we spread out a bit? Number three, the One Show. An evening chat show like no other, it's hard to describe exactly what happens on The One Show every weeknight at 7. So we understand that you have a bit of a rodent problem yes. at number 10. <laughs> Don't talk about the cabinet like that. It's currently led by Matt Baker and Alex Jones, no, not that one, but in the past has been fronted by Chris Evans and Adrian Childs. While it took a while to get going, it's now become a British institution, featuring items about current events, pop culture, and wildlife, with lots of celebrity guests. Oh, he's on! <laughs> oh, he's on! He's on. Yeah. Nonetheless, the show's mixed tone and odd segues have proved perplexing to many American guests, even as it remains a British favourite. It makes about as much sense. A good... <laughs> or maybe there is a good day to die hard. Number 2. The League of Gentlemen A local show for local people, The League of Gentlemen can be hard to understand even if you are from the UK, and that's sort of the point. Well, I've been having these really bad headaches for about six months now, and I just feel there's something wrong. I'll be the judge of that if you don't mind. Set in a bizarre rural village like no other, it boasts some of the weirdest and most memorable characters to ever grace British television. This is comedy at its darkest. Notable subplots include the butcher shop, addictive and mysterious special stuff, incestuous shop owners Edward and Tubbs murdering men who plan to build a new road, and the Dentons with their colour-coded towel and toad collection. You want him to relax and, and treat this place just like his own home? Of course, of course. Take your shoes off. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Don't worry, dear. Me and you will nip through to Narnia, have a snowball, if I get some Turkish delight. Oh, yes. Yes. 
Yes, um, this is a, there's, there's a com <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Foul and false be thy black heart, but blood red will be thy shroud. <laughs> Dad, it's your line. <laughs> Get one of the women to read it. Neither of the women can read. Number 1. Celebrity Juice A panel show that takes toilet humour to a glorious extreme, Keith Lemon's surreal brainchild has been going strong for over a decade. With Holly Willoughby and Fern Cotton as regular team captains, it's won a myriad of awards for its comedy. <laughs> Despite this, many of its games are much too risque to ever be shown on US television. In 2018, it sparked controversy when Fred Sirius was tricked into licking someone's bottom. <laughs> Regular games include shouting one out, played in toilet stalls, battle chips, which involves eating chips out of someone else's nose, and more recently, the ding a ling a dong a long a thon. Pamela, watch me! It's not the same if you don't watch! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.